Butter is full of surprises, and one of the most fascinating is that it can stay liquid even when it is colder than zero DEC. That sounds impossible, right? We're taught that water freezes at zero, forming ice. But under certain conditions, water can remain liquid at minus 5 DEC, minus 10 DEC, and uh, in some cases, even 40 DEC. This strange behavior is known as supercooling, and it happens more often than you might think. What exactly stops water from freezing when it's below zero? The answer lies in how ice actually forms. Freezing isn't just about temperature, it's also about structure. To become ice, water molecules must organize themselves into a perfect pattern called a crystal lattice. This doesn't happen automatically, even if the water is very cold. There needs to be a starting point, something solid, like a dust particle or a rough spot on the container, where the first tiny ice crystal can form. Without that, the molecules stay disordered and keep moving slowly, staying liquid even when the temperature drops far below freezing. Have you ever opened a cold bottle of water and watched it freeze right before your eyes? That's supercooled water in action. It looked like ordinary liquid until the moment you shook it or opened the cap. That tiny disturbance was enough to trigger freezing. Suddenly, the water molecules all began lining up into crystals in a chain reaction, turning the liquid into ice in seconds. <laughs> it's not magic. It's physics waiting to be set in motion. You might wonder, how cold can water get before it absolutely must freeze? In everyday settings, like a freezer at home, water can stay liquid down to about minus 5 DEC or minus 10 DEC if it's very pure and undisturbed. But in scientific experiments, researchers have cooled tiny droplets to minus 42 DEC and even 92 DEC before freezing. Why so much colder? Because the smaller and cleaner the droplet, the harder it is for ice to get started. There's just nowhere for a crystal to begin growing. <laughs> Did you know that clouds above you are often filled with supercooled water? In the upper atmosphere, many clouds contain liquid droplets that are far below freezing. These droplets remain liquid until they bump into dust or other particles, which trigger freezing and start the process of rain, snow, or hail. So supercooling actually plays a role in the weather you see every day, there are also living organisms that survive thanks to supercooling. Some arctic fish and insects avoid freezing by producing special proteins that block the formation of ice crystals. Their bodies can drop below zero DEC and stay liquid even when the world around them is frozen solid. Isn't that incredible? Scientists are trying to learn from these creatures to improve medical cryopreservation, keeping human organs or cells cold without forming damaging ice. Supercooling isn't just found in nature. You can even create it at home. If you chill a sealed bottle of purified water in your freezer without disturbing it, it might stay liquid at minus 5 DC, but open it or tap it and watch as it suddenly turns to slush. This is a simple way to see how powerful and precise the freezing process really is. So does water freeze just because it's cold? Surprisingly, no. Water freezes when molecules are able to find a way to connect and build a crystal. Without that tiny seed of ice, the water just keeps waiting. This makes supercooled water one of the most elegant paradoxes in everyday science, reminding us that even something as simple as freezing is more complex than it first appears. Water cooled below zero DC can persist as a liquid because it becomes kinetically trapped in a metastable state rather than immediately crystallizing. In this state, the free energy gain of forming ice is outweighed by a high activation barrier for nucleation. Molecular motions continue, allowing translational and rotational freedom without forming a rigid lattice. Hydrogen bonds fluctuate dynamically and fail to lock into the hexagonal arrangement of ice. Only an external disturbance, or seed crystal, can supply the energy needed to overcome this barrier. A sealed vial of ultra-pure water held at 8 DC remains clear and liquid until tapped sharply. Like a compressed spring held under tension, the water stores potential energy, but will not release it until the latch is released. <laughs> Freezing in typical water begins on microscopic imperfections or dissolved particles that act as nucleation centers. Ultra-pure water and extremely smooth containers lack these seeds, so no initial cluster can form readily. 
As temperature drops, molecules slow and hydrogen bonds strengthen, yet no persistent template exists for crystallite growth. The probability of spontaneous, purely homogeneous nucleation remains vanishingly low until much lower temperature. Therefore, supercooling depth correlates directly with water purity and container smoothness. Laboratory droplets of distilled water contained in flawless quartz capillaries can remain liquid down to 20 DDC. It is like trying to light a fire without any kindling or spark. The fuel is present, but ignition cannot occur. Water's hydrogen bonds continually form and break on picosecond timescales, maintaining a disordered yet cohesive liquid network. As the temperature falls below freezing, these bonds on average become stronger, but still allow adjacent molecules to slip by one another. Local clusters resembling ice form transiently, but collapse before they can grow into a full lattice. The absence of a stable, long-range template therefore prevents crystallization despite sub-zero temperatures. Only when a cluster reaches a critical size and remains intact does the network collapse into ice. Ultra-fast infrared spectroscopy shows that water at 10 DEGC retains vibrational signatures characteristic of the liquid state. It's like dancers slowing down yet never freezing into a rigid formation until the music stops completely. In micro droplets and nano confined volumes, the number of molecules available for nucleation is drastically reduced, lowering the chance of forming a critical ice nucleus. High surface curvature increases the energy penalty for creating a solid liquid interface. Surface tension imposes additional resistance to molecule rearrangement at the droplet surface. These factors enable microvolumes to supercool far below zero DGFC without freezing. By contrast, bulk water with abundant interfaces and particles freezes much closer to its equilibrium melting point. Cloud droplets have been observed to remain liquid at 30 DGC until they collide with airborne particulates. It is like trying to stage a parade in a narrow alley. There simply isn't enough space for people to line up in formation. Thermodynamics dictates that ice is the stable phase of water below zero DEC, yet kinetics determines how quickly that phase can form. Without sufficient molecular collisions or perturbations, water remains trapped in the liquid basin of its energy landscape. Rare fluctuations capable of surmounting the nucleation barrier are statistically unlikely under calm conditions. Therefore, water can remain supercooled for extended periods despite being thermodynamically unfavored, introducing agitation, impurities, or extended time increases the probability of nucleation in vibration-isolated freezers. Distilled water samples have been held liquid at 15 DC for hours before freezing spontaneously. It's like a heavy vault door that wants to open but remains shut until someone pushes with enough force. In the absence of heterogeneous nucleation sources, water can only supercool down to its homogeneous nucleation temperature of about 42 DGC at one atmosphere. Below this threshold, thermal fluctuations alone become sufficient to create a stable ice nucleus spontaneously. At that point, the activation barrier effectively disappears and rapid bulk crystallization ensues. This homogeneous limit thus defines the ultimate boundary of liquid water stability under normal pressure. No further enhancements in purity or isolation can extend supercooling beyond this temperature. Ultrafast droplet cooling experiments consistently observe freezing near 40 DECC without any nucleating agents. Like a rope stretched ever tighter until it snaps on its own, water will crystallize once its internal tension exceeds the homogeneous threshold. When a supercooled liquid finally crystallizes, it releases the latent heat of fusion in an exothermic burst that can briefly warm the surrounding ice towards zero DC. This rapid energy release often appears as a visible flash or transient mist from vaporization of adjacent water. The phenomenon vividly demonstrates the stored potential energy of the metastable liquid. Engineers exploit this behavior in thermal storage and phase change materials to deliver controlled heat output. Observing the thermal spike provides a clear marker of the precise moment of nucleation onset. Activating a supercooled gel pack by flexing its metal trigger causes crystallization and a sudden warm sensation. It is like uncorking a shaken soda bottle.
The fizz and warmth burst forth instantly. Supercooled water droplets are prevalent in cold cloud layers and can remain liquid down to 40 DC until they strike a solid surface, whereupon they freeze instantly. This rapid freezing causes hazardous aircraft icing, freezing rain on roads, and ice buildup on power lines. Meteorological models must include supercooling effects to predict these sudden transitions accurately. Engineers develop specialized de-icing coatings and active heating systems based on understanding supercooled droplet behavior. Capturing this paradox is essential for safety and energy efficiency in cold climate operations. Airliners frequently report abrupt ice accumulation on wings after passing through supercooled cloud regions. It's like spilled glue that remains sticky until it touches something, at which point it solidifies immediately. Cryobiologists leverage the supercooling paradox to preserve cells, tissues, and organs at sub-zero temperatures without ice and damage by using cryoprotectants and controlled cooling protocols. By keeping specimens in a supercooled state, between minus 4 DEC and minus D DECC, metabolic processes slow dramatically while structural integrity remains intact. Upon rewarming, the absence of intracellular ice ensures high viability and function. Advances in nucleation control and hydrogen bond dynamics have improved cryopreservation success for stem cells and organs. This technique underpins breakthroughs in transplantation, regenerative medicine, and long-term biological storage. Donor hearts cooled in supercooled preservation solutions have demonstrated higher post-transplant function compared to conventionally frozen organs. It is like pausing a complex digital file mid-separation without any corruption, then resuming seamlessly with no loss of data.